Okay, this is uh, Neil Martin in a, a rare occasion in front of the camera instead of behind. And I am got uh, Muzini just behind me, Muzini Grand Cru. This is uh, De Vogue's uh, Muzini here. And uh, it's freezing cold. <laughs> okay, Neil, what have you been doing in Burgundy? <laughs> uh, I've spent uh, a total of five weeks um, tasting through the 2012s. I'll wait for this car to go past. There we go. I've been uh, tasting the uh, 2012s over five weeks, a little bit before the harvest and a little bit after the harvest because I have to go home and see the family. And I visited about 125, 130 growers uh, doing all the tastings from barrel and, uh, you know, speaking to the growers, getting their uh, view on the wines um, and then you know it's important to get information of like some of the wines being racked because of the late malolactic so uh, just getting a real insight into what I think is probably the uh, the biggest uh, Burgundy vintage report ever on the uh, on the wine advocate. What do you think on the vi vintage 2012? Um, I think it's a really good vintage uh, I think it's some, some fantastic wines um, I've sort of been thinking about it there's sort of uh, in the growing season there's bad bad things and there's good bad things and the things about 2012 is it had a lot of um, good bad things but not a bad bad thing what I mean by that is it had a, they had a lot of problems early in the season a lot of uh, couleur, millerandage, uh, terrible frosts, uh, persistent rain you know everything that could go wrong did go wrong even uh, a lot of uh, wild boars eating the grapes from high up where the trees um, on the higher parts of the slope eating the grapes. So everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And then the second half of the season was much better. And the one bad, bad thing that didn't happen was uh, it didn't rain during the harvest. Uh, so they had no grey rot. So actually what they ended up with was a, a really, really tiny harvest. But actually they, the growers, uh, they didn't have to do much sorting because uh, the fruit was mainly like really, really good quality. So basically you had all that sort of sunshine and warmth at the end of the season concentrated into a very uh, tiny amount of berries. So you get these like uh, very, very good ripeness levels. So uh, it's, uh, I've been really impressed by the wines. So what do you have to say on the reds? The reds? Uh, yeah, the reds... Um, they're a little bit like 2010s, a little bit, uh, but they're, they're, they're different, they're not as structured, they're not as, as big. Uh, we were tasting a Christophe Rumier this morning and he used a great word, they're very weightless, there's a weightlessness about them. So you have this like intense fruit, but uh, the tannins are very kind of precise, uh, there's a lot of freshness, good acidity levels. Uh, they're not mainly powerful wines, but uh, they're just like uh, very, very intense flavours, which, which I really like. And in the reds, I'm, I'm liking uh, a lot of wines around L'Oxycoton, around there. Uh, some very good wines down to village level, which are often overlooked. And uh, a lot of wines around uh, Chambol Mizini I like as well, like right down to the village level. There's a real sort of completeness about the Chambol wines, which, um, which I really like. What about the whites? The whites. Uh, yeah, whites often get overlooked and, you know, of course there's a problem with sort of uh, Primox which stops people from buying them, which is a shame, uh, but understandable. Um, the whites, there's some, where I've really liked is actually Chassin Monrachet, and especially where you've got uh, the limestone soils, you've got some really nice fresh zingy mineral driven uh, whites, which um, I absolutely uh, love, I think they're fantastic. And Chassin is, Chassin Monrachet is one of those villages that often sort of gets overshadowed by Merceau and Pulini, but there's some really good uh, wines down there. And also, as always, uh, saint Aubin as well, the sort of uh, Pulini for people who can't afford Pulini. saint aubin has got some really, really good whites as well. Have you scored any 100 points? Well, that's, uh, I can't tell you. I've, I've scored uh, two wines so far, 100 points. We've still got uh, two days to go, and there's a couple... There's a couple that might might get there given their past form, so um, yeah, there's a couple, which is unusual for me. And your favourite soundtrack? Well, I've had my uh, driving around the Côte d'Or, I've had it 
you know, on uh, my iPod on shuffle. But I've been listening to Arcade Fire a lot. Elvis Costello's come up quite a lot. And um, a little bit of house music as always to keep the energy going. Okay, Thank yeah. you very much, thanks. <laughs>